This tax season, trust H&R Block to do your... No, wait, that's not me, guys. Anyways, today is tax day, so all you deadheads, I hope you've gotten your taxes done. Also, we are going to do something for your shiny new Game Kitty Pixel. So you've just received a Game Kitty Pixel, and you don't want to use the stock firmware that it comes with, as you shouldn't. So today we're going to do a guide and show you how to set this thing up so that you can have a much improved firmware. Although Game Kitty has not opened this up, an incredible developer named Moto from Japan has really expanded this and given us a better version than what you get. You are going to need a few things. Things, you're going to need a blank card to start with. Now the cards that Game Kitty ships are usually pretty good, but I recommend getting another blank card and starting from scratch. That way you preserve your original card and you're not going to be able to really mess anything up because you're going to have this to fall back on. So a 64 gig card is what I recommend, but you can do a 128 gig card if you think that's better. Although I think you're going to get pretty much the systems you can play pretty filled with games at 64 gigs. First guys, continue to hit that like button and subscribe we passed that 500 subscriber count so we're going to become a youtube partner soon thank you guys for helping us grow i want to reinvest into this channel this is a passion for me i have a full-time job that i love and will never give up but this is a passion and a fun thing that i like to do on the side so i want to really grow this and keep it going also come into the community i've been posting a lot of great deals there's some really good deals on aliexpress right now so make sure you check that out and leave some commentary I really love the banter going on in our community and love that. So let's get this thing set up, this shiny new Game Kitty Pixel that you just got, and let's get it set up so that you can do some things like RetroArch. And I'm not talking about what they call RetroArch. I mean the full RetroArch menu. Anyways, guys, we'll be right back. All right, so you're ready to set up that shiny new Pixel. So the very first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to travel over to this link to the Japanese developer Moto's link where he has posted the Pixel Stock OS. He's also posting the updates here as well. And so you're going to want to come here and you're going to want to grab this stock version right here. You can see that he has a guide here showing you how to use the mini tool, the partition magic, and the different things I'm going to show you in this guide as well. If you scroll down, you'll get to the uh, English version of this so you can see the English instructions and it kind of gives you an overview of what to do to get this started. So you're going to come down here and you're going to download this from the assets. We are also going to need to go and download the mini UI, I'm sorry, the mini partition tool uh, tool as well. You click the link here and go to it and it should open up a window and you can go in and you can download this version as well. So once you have that set up, you have your blank card and you've downloaded this software, you're gonna need to go and unzip this software right here. So you're gonna download all these parts. You're gonna run the first part using your unzip program and it's gonna put it together and it should create it into a folder for you. Then you're going to move on to the next step and we'll be right back. All right, for the next step, you're gonna use the program Rufus. Again, I'll leave a link in the description where you can load Rufus. Rufus is a program that allows you to burn data onto your SD cards. So if you have done any tinkering with things, you're probably familiar with this, but you're gonna put your SD card into the machine. You're going to load Rufus, and then you're going to go over here to where it says select. Make sure you are not on one of your other hard drives. Make sure you're on the card that you inserted. You're gonna go to select. It's gonna open up the window where you've unzipped that stock image that you downloaded over here. Once you've unzipped it and it has that folder, you'll go into that folder. You're gonna pick the image here. You're gonna click open. And now that you have Rufus started and you have this loaded and you have the right drive for this, you can leave all of the rest of this the same and you're gonna hit start. And once you hit start, it's going to ask you to, it's gonna warn you that it's gonna overwrite and delete what's on the card there. Um, is make sure that you want to do that and you can let it go through the process. It should take a couple of minutes and then you can move on to the next step. Okay guys. For this next step, once it's finished, it should then populate and show you a new drive that says ROMs folder. Now, please pay attention that even though we put in a 64 gig card, it's only showing 1.85 gigs. So the next step is we need to expand this partition. 
and we're going to do that by using a program called Mini Partition Tool. So I'll leave a link in the description where you can download this, but you're going to need to come in here and then locate that disk. We have it down here. Let me zoom in a little bit. And you can see that there is an unallocated portion right here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to extend this partition right here. You'll right click and go to extend. And we're going to take the free space from that unallocated. We're going to take all of the space and we're going to hit OK. Let it do its thing and hit hit the slider button right here. In the previous step I missed this so it only allocated half so I did it again but this time if you pull the slider all the way if you do it the first time it should allocate all of that. We're going to hit OK and you can see now it has extended that partition and if we go back over here and we refresh we should now have this partition fully extended. And we'll be right back with the next step. The final step here is apply. Apply pending changes. And you can watch it do its magic, resizing the partition. I'm going to fast forward through this. Zzz. And now all the uh, pending changes successfully and now shows that that ROM section is 51 gigs and 2% is used. And up here you can see, let me zoom out, up here you can see it now shows in our disk has the full 52 gigs. And now we're just going to transfer our ROMs into the folders, the corresponding folders. And you can see that there is a ROMs folder right here under RetroArch. And this has all of the different systems that your Pixel can play. I think it has some maybe that it can't play. Yeah, it has Dreamcast, so it's not going to play that. So this is the standard um, set of ROMs. But you can go in here and you can add your ROMs from this point. And then you're going to remove the card and we'll be right back showing what that looks like once we insert the card. All right, and we're back and you can see we have our newly burned card. We've extended our partition and we've added our ROMs. So now we're gonna take our pixel and we're gonna insert the card into the pixel. And with the card inserted, we're then going to power it on. And we should get that familiar, there we go, the pixel boot screen. And we're booting into the IUX front end. So this is that familiar looking front end. We now have the English version, but let's say that we want to, you know, do something a little different. We can go over here to our applications and where it says F E changes so front end changes so now we can click that front end change and now we have a menu that gives us the G menu the esoteric or the menu I so if we want to go into the G menu 2x we're simply going to leave it there because we're in esoteric right now we're going to hit enter and it is going to reboot and now we're in the different menu And you can do all the different things that you can do with this setting. If you want to go back to that previous uh, front end, you go over here to FE Changes. We're going to pick Esoteric. We're going to hit Enter. And there we are. And so this gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, the one that most people are excited about is if we go into Menu I. Um, personally, I don't, I'm not a fan of MenUI, but I know a lot of people are, so we just pick that, hit enter, and we're right there. And we go into Game Boy, and I don't think I had any Game Boy Advance ROM set up. I probably have to set this up in the right folders and everything, but you can go back and revert to stock. 
and go back to the esoteric. So this gives you a lot of flexibility um, within it to, it's much improved over the standard um, selection that comes with the um, unit when you buy it. Again, credit to Moto, the Japanese developer that has put a lot of effort and work into this for free, his love of this device. And the cool thing is once you're in RetroArch here, you can actually um, go in and you can pick and he has put in the both Pico and RetroArch settings on here. In the next section, I got to get this set up, but we're going to be right back and I'm going to show you what that looks like. We'll be right back, deadheads. All right, and we're back. So let's, for instance, say we want to go into Game Boy. So we're going to go into the Game Boy here and we're going to find our Game Boy games and let's pick. And here is the new menu now where you do have RetroArch, you have Pico Art, and then you have uh, Manira. So let's just do our traditional retro arc. We're going to go ahead and hit start like we did with the previous menu. And now we're in Adventure Island. And we can go ahead and start the game here. And there we go. And once you hit this button on the side here, you now have your familiar retro arc menu and you can do all kinds of things change your cores change your color of course this is game boy so if we go and we use the top buttons up here we can do speed and stuff like that that's the promise of having the four buttons up here that lets us do things like that we can do all kinds of our normal settings in here now let's say that we want to use a different um, version to do this we can go here and we can try pico arc it won't always work on every rom let's try a different rom sometimes you do have to test this let me bzzz. and sometimes you just have to reboot this it gets a little stuck but i've now got it working so you can see that we do have um, it set up to do pico arc if i hit start it's going to load it and there we go we have our game boy advance castlevania and unlike the retro arc menu now it is using a standalone emulator uh, where you have a little bit more flexibility uh, to do things and so uh, again, this is, you know, if you want to use your familiar cores through your RetroArch or you want to use some standalone emulators, it does give you that, that flexibility um, to do that and then play your games like that. So, all right, Deadheads, this has been a installation guide for Moto's version of the Pixel software. He has continued to update this. The version that I loaded now was the original version he released back in February. I'm going to leave links to where you can obtain the software. Um, to do this, again, you just need a blank card. A 64 gig card is pretty sufficient for what this can play. You're going to get a ton of games on a 64 gig card. You could go up to 128 gigs and, and really max this thing out if you want to. I'm also going to leave a link for my Etsy store if you'd prefer to buy the game card already flashed and ready to go. I'm going to be selling those on my Etsy store along with these grips that I've designed for your Pixel. So if you want and are interested in those, you know, make sure you check out my Etsy store in the link below. Anyways, guys, I hope this guide has been helpful and has given you guys um, a better experience with this, especially those of you that really like the menu UI. Anyways, deadheads, we'll see you next time. Dead Fred out.